Okay, well after that, let's see what happens. <laughs> Which is now. The reading period meant that we were supposed to be studying, but I found that I was spending a lot of time thinking about Mark. I knew he didn't want me to dwell on his past, but... Well, I cared about him. It bothered me, knowing that there was so much I didn't know, that he had never really let me in. Now that we were closer, maybe if I asked him about it, he'd tell me? With that in mind, I headed to the library and found Mark pouring through some scholar's opinion of Nietzsche's, Nietzsche's philosophy? Question mark? Oh, Malia, I was thinking of you. Today I was walking and I saw a child in a teddy bear suit on a leash. It was the strangest thing. And the mother was American. Why do you do such things? It's... We don't. It took a bit of time to set him straight on the matter. I swore up and down that most Americans didn't want to treat their children like animals, stuffed or otherwise. Eventually he took my word for it, though he still looked doubtful. So, what do you want from me? I flinched. How could you tell that I wanted something? <laughs> it was obvious. Even after all this time, I didn't understand him. He could tell when I wanted something from him, but he couldn't tell when he was making people angry? What kind of life had he lived? Well... Look, I know there are things you don't like talking about. Immediately, Mark's eyes glazed over and he crossed his arms, but I persisted. I want to know what happened in your past. I care about you, and I want to get to know you. This is kind of a part of that. Does it matter? I don't want to talk about it. I've moved on. But I want to understand you better. I really think this will help. It's important to me. Mark stared at me in silence. If I hadn't noticed his slight twitching, I would have thought he was angry. Instead, I knew he was fighting an internal battle, making up his mind. Finally, he heaved a huge sigh and collapsed into his chair. <sighs> I am not actually from France. At least, I do not think so. It is not likely. In my early years, I lived in an orphanage. It may have been in Russia. It may have been somewhere else. I do not know. We did not go outside. We had our rooms, little more. Most of the time, there was only one nurse for all the building, and there was too much work for her to do. Children who were not quiet by nature could be made to be quiet, in other ways. Because of this, I was, what they say, not well socialized. This is why I have trouble understanding the things that people do not say sometimes. Eventually, I was taken from the orphanage and shipped to France, where a family wished to adopt a boy with needs. Their own children were old and had left home. It wasn't bad. I mean, they are not bad people, my sponsors. They are affectionate and supportive when they are around. They are also very wealthy and very busy. So I was often alone. Again. Don't look at me like that. It was not suffering. I had all that I needed. I must have been making some kind of face at him. I tried to resume what I thought was a neutral expression. He raised an eyebrow, but continued. Most of my life has been spent alone. It's not something to feel bad about or to pity me for. It's just the way it is, the way that I am. I tried to make friends at school, but I was not successful. I was awkward with people and defensive about my past. I could be aggressive if I felt threatened. I was not a nice person, so people avoided me. I dove into philosophy and meditation to cope. I was greatly depressed for a while, but the ideas I found pulled me out. That's why I'm majoring in it now. After I graduated, I wanted to travel to learn more about people and figure out how to get along with them. I've had enough of being alone. And, well, here I am now, with you. He finished and looked at me, daring me to... to do I don't know what. 
Mark, I'm so sorry. Shut up. I stopped, shocked. He softened. Uh, please. Don't do that. Don't focus on the past. What's done is done. What happened happened. What's important is what I'm doing now. He paused as if lost in thought. Thank you for sticking with me. And giving me a chance. And being my unofficial tutor in the ways of social interaction. I smiled. Oh, so you've been using me all along. I should have known. Of course. What did you expect from me? A little more subterfuge, to be honest. You weren't very subtle. I guess I did tell you outright. Well, lesson learned. I'll do better next time. Next time? I thought I was the only one you were dating. <laughs> you are. Don't worry. I smiled back at him, feeling relieved. Thank you for telling me about your past. It did help me understand you. Now it makes sense why you're always saying those fatalistic things. You don't mean them in a bad way, you're just stating what you think of as a fact. The way I see it, the sooner people accept the fact that bad things happen, the happier they'll be. It does no good to run from it. You have to look at it and accept it. Then you can start to see the good again. It's about being honest with yourself. Yeah, I guess it is. Thank you, Mark. You've already thanked me. No, thank you for teaching me something about life. Mark looked struck. Then, to my surprise, a hot blush tinted his cheeks. Uh, no problem. It was nothing. Don't worry about it. Um, so... Do you want to hear about this book I'm reading? Please. We spent the rest of the evening cozying together in the library, talking about philosophy, stories, and life. It was the happiest I'd ever felt. That was really nice. That was one of the nicest... Scenes? For interactions? I don't know how to word it, but... It was one of the nicest things in this game. What an interesting backstory for Mark. I understand him better, too, after all that. Um... I'll let you guys do your thing. It's okay. <laughs> oh boy. Our boy's excited again. I am so excited. Clearly. I've never seen anyone so excited to eat food. You have no idea how long I've been wanting to do this. With someone, I mean. I grinned at him and he glanced away, blushing. Is this a good spot? I wasn't quite sure what made a good picnic spot, spot, but this was in the shade of a tree with soft grass underneath. Plus, nobody was around. It was nice and quiet, and for once, England had broken its cloudy layers and brightened into a sunny day. It's perfect. I spread the lavender blanket on the ground. Peggy had grudgingly loaned it to us and set down the picnic basket. All right, let's eat. I wasn't sure a picnic was a good date idea at first. I didn't like the idea of spending that much time outdoors, especially if we weren't doing anything in particular. But as we lay around and talked, occasionally getting into ridiculous tickle fights and playing childish hand games, I started to see the appeal. I hadn't felt so relaxed in ages. So then I was running down the staircase trying to get away from the guy, but his friend was waiting at the bottom. Whoa. Mark's story about a bully from his old school was interrupted by a rumble of thunder. We both glanced around, surprised. The sun had vanished and dark clouds hung in the distance. We should probably get going before it... Ah! Let's go! Ah, we're soaked! I'm so c c cold You're shivering! You should get out of those clothes. Here, I'll find you something to change into. Mark peeled off his soaking wet clothes, and I followed suit, rummaging in my drawer for something that'd look half decent on him. Why, when his room is down the hall? <laughs> like, he literally could have gone to his room and changed. <laughs> sure, okay, why not? Suspension of disbelief. Hmm, you know, getting dressed certainly is one way to warm up, 
but I can think of a few more. I turn and met Mark's grin with a look. Well, if you say so, I'm certainly not opposed. So really, in a way, the rain helped us more than hurt us. <laughs> okay, other than the silliness of like, I gotta find something decent for him to wear. His room is down the hall? That was funny. Oh, hi, Aussie. Yes, I'll hear you out. Okay, let's go. Whoever gets to 50 tickets first wins. 50 tickets? This arcade is notoriously stingy. Do you know how much it'll cost us to get to 50 each? <sighs> Worried you're gonna lose. Lose money? Yeah. I knew by now that money didn't mean much of anything to Mark, but while he would happily pay for anything I wanted, I didn't feel entirely comfortable sponging off him. But since my only other option right now was sponging off my parents, it was awkward either way. Aw, come on. You promised we could. I could never play these games with friends before. He batted his eyelashes at me, the saddest puppy I ever saw. Ah, oh, fine. And the winner gets a reward. Now that makes it interesting. Okay, you're on. We took off down different aisles of the arcade. I headed straight for the basketball game, shooting basket after basket and watching the tickets creep out in slow, soldier-like precision. 48? 49? What? Only 49? Ugh! I glanced around, looking for a sign of Mark, but saw nothing. Still time for one more round. Finally! 50 tickets! Now where was he? I sprinted through the halls of the arcade, narrowly avoiding small children and a canoodling couple. Finally, I found Mark eagerly counting up tickets before a machine filled with buzzing bees. Malia, I've got 50 tickets! I threw my tickets into the air above him and they fell across his head like rain. What? No! That's right, I'm the winner! <laughs> are you really? Are you sure? What are you talking about? I got 50 tickets, didn't I? <laughs> Mark chuckled, an ominously low kind of laugh. It didn't bode well. Can I see this quickly? Okay. I handed him my tickets and he headed off to the counter at the front of the arcade. Curious, I followed him. He pointed at something on the wall and the employee took down a huge stuffed dog, bigger than my, he my head, and handed it to him. Don't tell me this was all a ploy just to get that stupid stuffed animal. <laughs> if I told you I wanted it earlier, you'd have just told me it was a ripoff. That's because it is a ripoff. And now it is mine. Thank you, Malia. He kissed me on the cheek, completely ignoring my pain. <laughs> well played, sir. Well, regardless of the motive, I had fun. I guess. Hey, Malia. Don't you want your reward? Oh yeah, I was supposed to get something for winning, wasn't I? Mark playfully slipped off his shirt and grinned at me. This is a reward for you, too. There. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I took off mine as well. Yeah, alright, I'm glad you called him out on it. That's not fair. This is a reward for you as much as me. Well, you never said we couldn't share it. You are so devilish. Yes, but you enjoy it. I do. In the end, we both won. Yay! <laughs> Excellent. I love it. My goodness. The days. Look at them go. That was a lot of days. Final weekend already? Aw, I was enjoying those dates so much. Alright, James, I made a lot of friends. Oh! I had a good- I had a friend goodbye with Angie. <laughs> nice. Alright, I'll forgive you, Aussie. Hi! If I had expected Mark to be heartbroken at my leaving, well, that just wouldn't be Mark. Malia! 
Is it time? He grabbed my shoulders and pulled me against him into a hug. Flying across the ocean. It is a great adventure. Perhaps I should try it sometime. You should. I'd love to see you again. I could show you around New York and introduce you to my friends. Perhaps. But until then, don't forget to write. Wherever we have words, we are not so far away. I could never forget about you. And I never wanted to. Aw, so cute. Several years later. How many, how many years is several years? Well, we should have got the good ending. Our friends are involved in this? This is great. You what? It wasn't that big a deal. You saved two people's lives. How is that not a big deal? Mark sheepishly rubbed the back of his neck. I clasped him on the shoulder. I told you, Mark is extraordinary. You were the only one who thought so. You just needed a little extra nudging. I winked at him and Mark nuzzled against my arm. I'm so sad you're only here for two weeks. I'm a busy man. There's a lot to do, a lot to see. But I'm very glad I got to meet you. Molly has told me so much, so I couldn't wait to meet you two. I'm really happy I get along with you so well. Any friend of Molly's is a friend of mine. Especially one as fine as yourself. Hey! Hands off! He's all mine. Jerk. <laughs> You're the jerk. Don't try to steal my boyfriend. Where are you going next again? I've told you already. After America, it's Vietnam, then India, and then Russia. You have to remember this. Otherwise, I will be alone in Russia for weeks waiting for you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It sucks that I can only join you on breaks. Eventually I'll be out of school and then we can travel all you want. We'll be homeless vagabonds together. The world will be our home. I can't tell if this is cute or disgusting. It's a little bit of both. Malia is a totally different person when you're around, Mark. She's all adventurous and curious and... happy. It's the darndest thing. Aren't you glad you went on that trip, Malia? I rolled my eyes. Yes, I'm very glad and I'm super thankful to you two for forcing me to go and it changed everything and you were right and shall live on forever as the immortal beings of correct living. Happy? Of course, especially now that you are. So when are you gonna put a ring on it? Nene! Yeah, Malia, when are we putting a ring on it? Ah. Give me a break! I'm still a poor college student. Well, I'm a homeless vagabond, and I can't live with you in America unless you marry me. I glared at Nene. The proposal was supposed to be a complete surprise, and now he was totally onto it. Aw, oh, she was going to propose! How cute. She looked at me in a way that su suggested it was obvious anyway, and I casually smashed her foot underneath the table. Yow! Mark put an arm around me and grinned. He was definitely onto me. I could never keep anything from him. I was happy with Mark. He was happy with me. We made each other something more than either of us could be alone. And together, we were never alone. Even when he was on the other side of the world. That's why... We're gonna be together forever. I glanced up, surprised at Mark's words. He pulled a ring out of his pocket and grinned. Oh, my heart. I love mutual proposals. <laughs> Both surprise proposals that were planned on the same day. Come on. Don't even pretend you didn't see this one coming. I couldn't help laughing. <laughs> so this was my future. It was going to be great. I loved that route. I loved everything about it. I got nothing negative to say whatsoever. It was... That, that, that is my favorite. I knew I liked Mark for a reason. 
It was like all the sweetness of Angie, minus the dumb sexist nonsense, and also all the sensibility of Danny without like the crazy kind of obsessiveness of Danny. So, and then also he's just like into books and a complete goofball. Love him. Oh, that was great. Okay, I assume I got the good, that was a good ending, right? Romance mark. Yep, definitely good ending. Okay, and he's got a neutral and a bad ending. So that's something we're gonna try and get next time. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Mark's Root. I enjoyed the heck out of it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Curious where he falls on your list, guys. And next time we'll try and get one of the other endings. I'll shoot for the neutral ending, but you never know with this game. So we'll see what happens. Until then, I will see you later.